Hey guys, it's Steve. So welcome back to our video series, Seven Cooks to Become a Pro. So in this video, we're gonna look at the basics of the Grill Dome Kamado, such as starting the cooker up and shutting it down. And then we're gonna talk about indirect versus direct. And then we're gonna look at some various rack setups. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of the basic rack setups on our extra large Grill Dome Kamado here. And so this is the, what you're looking at here, this is the, just the main uh, grill grate right here. It's a 22 inch grill grate. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use the grill gripper tool and you kinda of hold it upside down and just grab it like that. And we're gonna go ahead and just lift this out because the first thing I want to show you is the indirect cooking rack. So here's our indirect cooking rack and again you can use this in the downward or the upward position. So this is the upward, this is the downward. And so for an indirect setup you basically just set it down just like this and then you can either use an aluminum pizza pan or a ceramic stone to set right on top of it like this for your heat diffuser. And so what you would do at this point is go ahead and put your rack back on. So we're just gonna set our rack right back on. And if you're just if you just need one level then you're good to go. So you can you know this is a huge cooking diameter so you can cook butts, ribs, whatever you want. Or, we've got the grill extender rack right here that you can set on top. So basically what we've got now is we've got a uh, two level uh, indirect cooking environment. You can cook a ton of food with this setup right here. Okay, now that we just looked at how to set up our grill dome for an indirect method, I'm now going to show you the two zone method. So basically what a two zone setup is, is where you're looking to have an indirect side and also a direct side. So an example of that is if you're trying to cook something like pork chops or uh, you know something that you just want to get some char over some direct heat, but then take it over to an indirect side just to allow that internal temp to come up some more. What we're going to use for that is the half moon rack. And so this is basically just half of a grill extender rack. And then what you do is Grill Dome also offers their half moon pizza stone. And so you just set this underneath just like this. And now that pizza stone is going to be blocking that heat kind of like we just saw on the uh, indirect method where we had the full pizza stone down there. So this is basically doing the same thing but you've got a direct heat environment over here with an indirect environment over here. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is show you the setup for cooking pizzas. So to start off with the pizza setup, we're just gonna go ahead and get our main grill grate on. And then you really have two options for pizza. The preferred option is using the grill extender and so what this is doing is elevating your pizza up close to the dome so you've got all that nice convection heating going on for a nice even cook um, and then you want a, a lot of airflow around the sides and so all you have to do after that is just place your pizza stone right on top and you're all set I will show you one other quick option you can use the indirect cooking rack as well, and uh, some guys definitely do that. I do that sometimes. Uh, the only difference is that it's not as high. It's about an inch uh, shorter than the grill extender, but you still have a lot of airflow, um, and you can still go ahead and set your pizza stone on there and cook like that as well. All right, so the last thing I'm going to show you is how to set up the grill dome to sear some steaks. So 
Grill Dome Kamados are really popular for the, the very high temperatures they can achieve. And so what we're going to do is use our grill gripper tool and just go ahead and remove the main rack. And when you're going for a high heat sear on a steak, all you're doing is using your indirect cooking rack in the downward position. And that's literally all you're going to do. So you're going to get up, get the Kamado up to about six, 700 degrees and literally cook those steaks down just above the lump charcoal. And so you're going to get a true sear by doing it that way. Okay, so now that I've walked you through the various rack setups on our Grill Dome Kamado, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to get this thing cranked up. So I've already got some leftover lump charcoal down here in the bottom from um, my previous cook, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and freshen this up with some of the Grill Dome lump charcoal. Just going to pour some of this in here. Alright, so what I like to do, and this is, in my opinion, this is really crucial before any cook is uh, when, whenever you dump charcoal, uh, your lump charcoal down here into your Kamado, you're going to have, um, you know, uh, just some uh, residue and leftover ash. It's going to kind of get cluttered up in the bottom. So I just take our um, ash tool here and I give it a good stir and just kind of mix it up. Okay, so that's good enough. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and move down to the bottom damper and use the ash tool to pull the ash out. Okay, so here we are down at the bottom damper. I've got the, the door wide open. And what I do is I just take a piece of uh, tin foil and just kind of put it down here on the bottom. And then we're going to take our ash tool and all you got to do is just lift up through here and see all that ash that comes out. And this is absolutely crucial that you get this stuff out of here to allow proper airflow during your cook. So I do this before every single cook. And you reach way up in there and look at all that ash. It's just gonna come straight out. This ash tool is absolutely necessary in my opinion. So we're just gonna pull all this out until we get it all out. All right, so now that we've got our firebox filled up with some nice lump charcoal and we've got the ash cleaned out of the bottom, it's time to go ahead and get this thing fired up. So first thing you wanna do is you just wanna make sure that bottom uh, damper that we were just looking at, you wanna have that wide open to allow plenty of airflow. And then we're gonna be taking the Grill Dome Rapid Light, which is basically just a plug-in heating element. And all you gotta do is just take this and bury it down inside the coals. Just spread your lump over the top of it. And this thing is gonna get this lump lit in just about seven or eight minutes. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug it in and we'll pick back up in a few minutes. Okay, so it's been right at eight minutes and it might be hard to see, but just down below this top layer, all of that lump is just glowing red hot already. So that's how quick this uh, Grill Dome Rapid Light works. So all you really have to do from now is just unplug the Rapid Light and remove it you obviously want to be really careful with where you sit the rapid light it takes uh takes a while to cool down and then what you do is you just go ahead and add any uh wood chunks or wood chips go ahead and drop in whatever uh, rack setup you want to use and then you're just gonna go ahead and shut the lid and you want both the bottom and the top vents to be wide open for the first 10 minutes or so. Okay, so now that we've got the lid shut and we've got both the bottom and the top vents wide open, uh, the first thing to mention is that if you're new to uh, Kamado style cookers, Definitely don't walk away from these things when you've got both the vents wide open. Uh, if you were to walk away for 15 or even 20 minutes, um, this thing could just be, you know, 900,000 degrees. Uh, so you really need to 
um, keep a close eye on them and uh, once your uh, temperature starts creeping up you're basically gonna start controlling uh, your cooker temp with the bottom vent and the top vent and so for low and slow I normally have the bottom vent about a quarter of an inch open then I've got this top vent uh, about like that about a quarter of an inch and it'll sit at 225 for hours and hours and hours if you're doing uh, pizzas then I've got the bottom vent more like about an inch open and maybe the top like this and so it's all about just kind of learning how to control both the the bottom and the top vents now as far as shutting the cooker down so you've already cooked and uh, it's ready to go ahead and get this guy shut off as long as you're at 300 degrees or below you can shut both the bottom and the top vents if you're above 300 degrees so if you cook some pizzas or sear some steaks and you have the cooker running really hot you go ahead and shut the bottom vent but you want to leave the top vent about a quarter of the way open like this uh, you don't want to shut them both when it's that hot and so once it gets uh, to 300 degrees or below then you just go ahead and shut it completely like that and then it'll go ahead and start cooling down the fire will snuff out and you'll be all set all right so now that we've had a good overview of the accessories of the cooker we've looked at how to operate the cooker and we've looked at some various rack setups with this grill dome Kamado. We're gonna start putting those things to use and start doing some actual cooks. So we're gonna be cooking things like ribs, chicken, pizza, steak, just some real easy things to start off with. So we hope you'll come back and join us on this uh, seven cooks to become a pro video series. I'm looking forward to it and I hope to see you again.